What's going on everyone, it's Rifle here, and thanks for checking out this Fallout 76 video. This is going to be a start to a new series where I'm going to try to find better locations to drop a nuke at in Fallout 76. As you guys may know, the main locations at the moment is White Springs because there's tons of ads that do spawn here to get tons of experience and loots, which you can just leave and rejoin the area that you nuke to get all the enemies to spawn again for even more experience and loot. But of course, that's going to require you to rejoin someone that stayed in the server that you nuked, or vice versa. Someone leaves and you stay in the server. I'm not going to hate the White Springs is a very great location to nuke, but the goal out of the series is to find just as good of a location to actually drop the bombs because I don't know about you guys but I'm tired of seeing nukes dropped at White Springs and there is also a lot of nukes that are dropped over at this Fisher Site Prime at the bottom right of the map. In case you don't know this is how you spawn the Scorch Beast Queen and I'm not quite bored of this fight yet because there's quite a bit of goodies that you can get from the Scorch Beast Queen and she is a very very tough fight and I love a challenge. I will say it would be nice if there was some other big fight scenario like the Scorch Beast Queen somewhere in Fallout 76 that we just haven't discovered yet. Speaking of, that's actually the reason why I chose Twin Lakes for the location to nuke first to begin this series. The reason why is because there is a super behemoth that is guaranteed to spawn over by this area. And me and my team is going to be finding out if we do go and nuke Twin Lakes, if that would transform the super behemoth into a similar fight like the Scorch Beast Queen. I'm really excited on whether or not we'll be able to transform this behemoth into something like Swan that we experienced in Fallout 4. I mean, after all, this spot and how it's sleeping in the water and everything, it's very, very similar to Swan. So, so maybe it could transform into a behemoth similar to it. I mean, I don't know. I hope at least it has some kind of unique name. So, hey, let's go ahead and jump into this. If you find this enjoyable, consider leaving a like. That is always greatly appreciated. And also, maybe if you want, stick around and subscribe for more Fallout 76 content. That's totally up to you though. So I'm going to be showing you where the behemoth exactly spawns at over by Twin Lakes. As you can see, here's the location to that. It's near White Springs and Huntersville. And it's going to be over here where I have my custom destination. But yeah, if you get a little lost, all you have to do is just really follow the water stream. And at the end of the water stream, you will find a behemoth sleeping typically. And the little pond down here. Now this is similar to how we encountered Swan in Fallout 4. I have to say I enjoyed that encounter so much. That was a good time first encountering it. You can also notice it looks like a camper died here as well. This looks like a nice fishing spot, to be honest. But yeah, right in front of this fisherman, you can just see this giant beast with its head down in the water. That's how it sleeps. Just face down in the water. Oh my gosh. I'm going to go ahead and jump on top of its back. Are uh, you? Uh, what? Uh, are you? Okay, so it seems like you have to actually hit this guy to start this fight. Go ahead and bonk him. And bam! Check it out. Pretty sweet and scary. I'm using a pretty powerful weapon. Didn't really get nothing too good from him this trip, but you can get some decent loot from him. As you can see, this time around, I got a Nuka Quantum grenade plan. I mean, that isn't too shabby. But let's see what happens if we end up dropping a nuke here, if we get a similar experience like the Scorch Beast Queen. Maybe this behemoth will transform into an even more powerful behemoth that we have to take on. I'm hoping it's no walk in the park and this actually works. So, as you can see, we are about to officially nuke Twin Lakes area to see what actually happens. Let's make it over there so we can see the explosion.
So here's what happens when you do nuke Twin Lakes. Starting off with the Behemoth. Yes, it does evolve, it does get more powerful, but it's nowhere near a Scorch Beast Queen fight. Not to mention, the Behemoth doesn't change its appearance whatsoever. It would be cool if it would modify, I mean I get it, it's a glowing Behemoth now. But I mean, it's level 95 and it really isn't all that tough compared to the original fight. I was being optimistic and thinking, hey this is going to be a sweet secret boss fight like the Scorch Beast Queen. Turns out I, I probably should have been more realistic with what I was trying to think of, but hey, you never know what Bethesda added in here that we just haven't discovered quite yet. I mean, just because we don't have a very, very strong behemoth here to fight, similar to the Scorched Beast Queen, doesn't mean we won't have one further down the road in Fallout 76. You never know what they could update into the game. And not to mention, it doesn't seem like the loot really improved compared to the original Behemoth, just throwing it out there. I will say though, of course, you do get more experience taking out this version than the original. So yeah, speaking of experience, it seems that you'd get the most out of your nuke if you would nuke White Springs rather than Twin Lakes. That is if you are going for experience. I mean, seriously, if any of you have any suggestions on what could possibly top White Springs with experience wise, feel free to leave it down below in the comments. We may test it out in a future episode because we are on the hunt to show the community places to nuke that are actually useful like White Springs and fighting the Scorch Beast Queen. So overall, nuking Twin Lakes isn't all that useful for experience. It is pretty useful if you are looking for raw cobalt flux. There is tons of gloom sap around on the trees and also there's tons of rad stags that you can take out for high radiation fluids, and I found a few glowing mass around in the area off enemies as well. Overall, it's way better to nuke White Springs or the Fisher Site Prime than this. So yeah, that's really it though for Twin Lakes. Hope you found this enjoyable, and once again, this is a start to a new series that I'll be continuing for a little while over time until we actually find more places that are worth nuking because I know it can take quite a bit of time to officially launch the nuke and you want to make sure you're launching a nuke at an area that is worth your while. I understand time is valuable. That's why I thought this series would be something enjoyable for the Fallout 76 community. Hopefully you all end up enjoying it. If you do, once again, consider leaving a like. That is always greatly appreciated, everyone. And hey, if you are new around here, once again, I'm gonna leave you a friendly reminder. Consider sticking around, subscribing for more future Fallout 76 content. And if you don't like what you see in the future, you know, just simply unsubscribe. That's all right, I'm not trying to force you to stick around. I just hope you enjoy what I actually produce. I'm out of here though, everybody. Thanks for taking the time to watch and listen. Until next time, peace.